Overview Study Session 2 Economics of Exchange Introduction 1. Exchange and Opportunity Costs Comparative Advantage Principle 2. Comparative Advantage and Production Possibilities Curve Under which we have factors that can shift the production possibilities curve. 3. Study Session Summary This study session will point out why economic systems that are based on specialization and the exchange of goods and services are generally far more productive than those without specialization. In doing so, you will explore why people choose to exchange goods and services in the first place, rather than having each person produce his or her own food, clothing, shelter, and other necessities of life. Learning Outcomes When you have studied this session, you should be able to highlight the rationale behind the principle of specialization in production of goods and services, and construct the production possibilities curve, PPC, and point out its usefulness. Exchange and opportunity costs, comparative advantage principle. The scarcity principle tells us that the opportunity cost of spending more time on any one activity is having less time available to spend on others. This principle helps in explaining why everyone can do better by concentrating on those activities at which he or she performs best relative to others. The principle of absolute advantage tells us that one person has an absolute advantage over another if he or she takes fewer hours to perform a task than the other person. However, comparative advantage is a case where one person has a comparative advantage over another if his or our opportunity cost is performing a task. However, comparative advantage is the case where one person has a comparative advantage over another if his or her opportunity cost of performing a task is lower than the other person's opportunity cost. Simply put, a person has a comparative advantage at producing a particular good or service, say haircuts, if that person is relatively more efficient at producing haircuts than at producing other goods and services. It will be seen that we can all have more of every good and service if each of us specializes in the activities at which we have a comparative advantage. One of the most important insights of modern economics is that when two people or two nations have different opportunity costs of performing various tasks, they can always increase the total volume of available goods and services by trading with one another. For example, consider a community in which Moshoriri is the only professional bicycle mechanic and Iremide is the only professional software programmer. Moshoriri also happens to be an even better software programmer than Iremide. If the amount of time each of them takes to perform these tasks is as follows. Moshoriri takes 20 minutes to design a software program and 10 minutes to complete a bicycle repair, while Iremide takes 30 minutes to design a software program and 30 minutes to complete a bicycle repair. The table above shows that Moshoriri has an absolute advantage over Iremide for both activities. While Moshoriri, the mechanic, needs only 20 minutes to design software, Iremide, the programmer, needs 30 minutes. Moshoriri's advantage over Iremide is even greater when the task is fixing bikes. She can complete a repair in only 10 minutes compared to Iremide's 30 minutes. 
Question. In what way are opportunity cost and comparative advantage principle related? Feedback. Comparative advantage is synonymous with opportunity cost because it describes a phenomenon where a nation, firm, or an individual has a lower opportunity cost in the production of a particular commodity over the above competing firms, nations, or individuals. However, the fact that Moshoriri is a better programmer than Iremide does not imply that Moshoriri should design a software program. Iremide has a comparative advantage over Moshoriri at programming. She is relatively more productive at programming than Moshoriri. Similarly, Moshoriri has a comparative advantage at a given task if his or her opportunity cost of performing that task is lower than the other person. What is Iremide's opportunity cost of designing a software program? Since she takes 30 minutes to design a program, the same time she takes to fix a bicycle, her opportunity cost of designing a software program is one bicycle repair. In other words, by taking the time to design a software program, Iremide is effectively giving up the opportunity to do one bicycle repair. Moshori Ire, in contrast, can complete two bicycle repairs in the time she takes to design a software program. For her, the opportunity cost of designing a software program is two bicycle repairs. Moshori Ire's opportunity cost of programming measured in terms of bicycle repairs for GON is twice as high as Iremide's. Thus, Iremide has a comparative advantage at programming. The interesting and important implication of the opportunity cost comparison summarized in Table 2 below is that the total number of bicycle repairs and software designs accomplished if Iremide and Moshoriri both spent part of their time at each activity will always be smaller than the number accomplished if each specializes in the activity in which she has a comparative advantage. Moshori Ire's opportunity cost of designing a software is two bicycle repairs and her opportunity cost of a bicycle repair is 0 0.5 software design. While Ire Mide's opportunity cost of designing a software is one bicycle repair and Ire Mide's opportunity cost of a bicycle repair is one software design. Suppose for example that people in the community demand a total of 16 software designs per day. If Moshoriri spends half a time designing softwares and the other half repairing bicycles, an 8-hour workday would yield 12 software program designs and 24 bicycle repairs. To complete the remaining 4 updates, Iremide 4 designs, Iremide will have to spend two hours programming, which will leave her six hours to repair bicycles. And since she takes 30 minutes to do each repair, she will have to complete 12 of them. So when the two women try to be jacks of all trades, they end up completing a total of 16 software design programs. So when the two women try to be jacks of all trades, they end up completing a total of 16 software program designs and 36 bicycle repairs. Consider what would have happened had each woman specialized in an activity of comparative advantage. Iremide could have designed 16 software programs on her own and Moshoriri could have performed 48 bicycle repairs. Specialization would have created an additional 12 bicycle repairs out of thin air. The conclusion is that gains from exchange are possible if trading partners have comparative advantages in producing different goods and services. You have a comparative advantage in producing, say, software program 
if your opportunity cost of producing software measured in terms of the corresponding opportunity costs of your trading partners. Maximum production is achieved if each person specializes in producing the goods and services in which he or she has the lowest opportunity costs. Comparative advantage makes specialization worthwhile, even if one trading partner is more productive than the others in absolute terms in every activity. Comparative advantage and production possibilities curve. In this section, you will gain further insight into the advantages of specialization by introducing a graph that can be used to describe the various combinations of goods and services that an economy can produce. Given a hypothetical economy in which only two goods are produced, coffee and groundnuts, it is a small economy. The production consists either of picking coffee beans or groundnuts. The more time workers spend picking coffee, the less time they have available for groundnuts. So if people want to drink more coffee, they must make do with a smaller amount of groundnuts. It is the combination of coffee and groundnuts that can be produced that gives a way of possibilities, which is known as production's possibilities curve. Production's possibilities curve is a graph that describes the maximum amount of one good that can be produced for every possible level of production of another good. For example, assume an economy with a single worker that can divide her time between two activities. The production's possibilities curve, that is PPC, of the worker is given as thus. Since the worker's PPC is a straight line, its slope is constant. The absolute value of the slope of the worker's PPC is the ratio of its vertical intercept to its horizontal intercept. That is, 24 pounds of coffee per day or 12 pounds of groundnuts per day equals 2 pounds of coffee or 1 pound of groundnuts. The ratio means that the worker's opportunity cost of an additional pound of groundnuts is two pounds of coffee. Note that the worker's opportunity cost, that is OC, of groundnuts can also be expressed as the following simple formula. OC nuts equals loss of coffee over gain of groundnuts, where loss of coffee equals the amount of coffee given up and gain in nuts is the corresponding increase in groundnuts. Likewise, the opportunity cost of coffee can be represented by the formula OC coffee equals loss of groundnuts over gain in coffee. To say that the opportunity cost of an additional pound of groundnuts is two pounds of coffee is thus equivalent to saying that the opportunity cost of a pound of coffee is half pound of groundnuts. The PPC above is not a straight line, as in the earlier examples involving only a single worker, but rather a curve that is bowed out from the origin. This bowl-shaped PPC means that the opportunity cost of producing groundnuts increases as the economy produces more of them. For example, when the economy moves from point A in the graph above to point B, it gets 20,000 pounds of groundnuts per day by giving up 5,000 pounds per day of coffee. When the production of groundnuts is increased further by moving from B to C, the economy gives up 5,000 pounds per day of coffee, yet this time gets only 10,000 additional pounds of nuts. This pattern of increasing opportunity costs persists over the entire length of the PPC. Note that the same pattern of increasing opportunity costs applies to coffee. Thus, 
As more of coffee is produced, the opportunity cost of producing additional coffee as measured by the amount of groundnuts that must be sacrificed also rises. Therefore, the reason why the PPC is bowed out is that some resources are relatively well suited for producing groundnuts while others are relatively well suited for producing coffee. The board shape PPC illustrates the general principle that when resources have different opportunity costs, we should always exploit the resource with the lowest opportunity cost first. This is called the low hanging fruit principle. Further, it is important to note that at any point on the PPC represents points of efficient production where all available resources are fully utilized and it is therefore impossible to increase the production of one product without reducing the production of the other. On the other hand, any point within the PPC represents inefficient production because not all available resources are used at such a point. A bold PPC basically explains the fact that some resources are relatively well suited for the production of a particular product while others are suited for the production of other products. B. The principle that justifies this is known as a low-hanging fruit principle. Factors that can shift the production's possibilities curve. The following are the factors that can shift the PPC. 1. The PPC can shift as a result of increase in the amount of production's resources available. When a nation's resource endowment increases or new resources are discovered, more production opportunities will occur and thus the PPC shifts outwards. 2. Population growth also causes an economy's PPC to shift outwards and thus is often listed as one of the sources of economic growth. However, because population growth also generates more mouths to feed, it cannot by itself raise a country's standard of living. Indeed, it may even cause a decline in the standard of living if existing population densities have already begun to put pressure on available land, water, and other scarce resources. 3. Improvement in knowledge and technology is another factor that can shift the PPC. As economists have long recognized, such improvements often lead to higher output through increased specialization. Improvements in technology often occur spontaneously, but more frequently they are directly or indirectly the result of increases in education. Study Session Summary In this study session, we presented the rationale behind the principle of specialization in production of goods and services. We also showed how to construct the PPC and point out its